Hey guys, hope you're all doing good and welcome to the channel. Helicopters are among the most fascinating vehicles that have been created by humans. Many people would have seen one but have no idea behind the working that is involved. Helicopters were conceptualized and made as early as 1906, but none of them were proper working models capable of lifting themselves off the ground and continue flying. Bigger strides were made in helicopter development in early 1920s when the British government funded an Argentinian inventor called Raul Pescara to develop three prototypes. His first prototype was developed in January 1924, but it was severely underpowered and was not able to lift its own weight off the ground. His second and third models fared much better. They were able to maintain powered flight for a much longer duration. The third model was coupled with a 250 horsepower radial engine and was able to maintain powered flight for over 10 minutes and most importantly use coaxial rotors. Normal helicopters use a single rotor for lifting the entire vehicle. But there are a few drawbacks when rotating them too. When a circular disc is rotated at a very high RPM, the discs tend to generate torque. The main rotor of the helicopter normally rotates in the clockwise direction. This causes a counter force or torque in the anti-clockwise direction. This torque forces the helicopter to rotate in the direction opposite to that of the main rotor. This decreases the stability of the helicopter. To counter this rotational torque on the body, helicopters use a tail rotor which provides the opposing force to push against the torque of the main rotor. Helicopters are highly dependent on the tail rotor for the yaw action. Any failure of the tail rotor could cause the aircraft to lose control and go into an uncontrollable spiral leading to a crash. Many innovative designs were made to avoid the tail rotor completely. One among them was the coaxial rotor. Coaxial rotor helicopters use a pair of rotors mounted one above the other. They are driven by coaxial shafts connected to the gearbox. The two rotors rotate in opposite directions and effectively cancel out each other's rotational torque. Since torque generated by the rotors is not acting on the body, the tail rotor can be completely removed. The lack of a tail rotor frees the helicopter from having to transmit torque to it, thus heavily simplifying the boom design. In fact, some coaxial designs make a particular point of exploiting this advantage by having a very short boom. A few good examples are the KA-25 and the KA-27. The reduced size allows these helicopters to be used on warships. However, the coaxial rotor is not without disadvantages. The design of the gearbox and the rotor control are much more complicated than normal helicopters. Just for the purpose of understanding, look at the complexity of the coaxial rotor head and compare it with the simplicity of a normal rotor head. The coaxial rotor head tends to have more moving parts. In general terms, more moving parts equals more maintenance, more inspections and even more expense. This is the reason why almost all coaxial rotor helicopters are military helicopters and not available for the commercial market. There are many more types of designs that use a counter rotating principle in a helicopter. We will be discussing them in our future videos. Until then, bye.